Hello everyone, um, back with a new tutorial, this one, uh, inspired by Rikus Buziar, not sure if I pronounced that right, but, um, took a look at my old tower defense engine, and I decided to, uh, take a moment to teach you how to make, uh, you know, the basics of what I did, I can't exactly show you everything, that would take a bit too long, but, uh, here we go, I'm gonna need about five active objects for, uh, this entire tutorial. So this is just going to show you the basics of the engine, I'm not going to, like I said, I might go, I might go a bit in depth later, like with another video, but for now, just this. Okay, so, first we're going to make a basic turret, like, similar to what I did in, uh, my other video. Okay. Sure, let me do that. Okay. Okay, and once we have that done, dang it, come on. So you have that done, crop it. And we're gonna make the action hotspot like on the turret. That way, uh, when it fires projectiles, it'll shoot from there. Okay, then we're gonna copy, and then we're gonna paste. And flip this. And make sure that it's still aligned because it's going to be a tad bit off, like a pixel off. Not that that's important, but consistency, you know? Okay. Okay. So once we have all that, uh, well, you know, you can add more frames so you can uh, look diagonal and stuff, you know. Or if you have a pre-rendered 3D model, you can, like, make it, like, look full 3D. But for now, you know, just the basics for directions. After we have that, we're going to make our projectile. Or we can just simply call it a bullet. That's what I'm going to do, but I think projectile is more fitting. All right. So even for 32 by 32, that's a bit big, so... Okay. I'm gonna bring this over here. You'll see why. And this will be our target that we're gonna shoot at. Once we have that, that's a little big, but that's fine. We'll just call it target. And then, this will be our spawner. We won't have to uh, make any design changes to it. It'll just be here. And we'll move the target off the frame. And this is the most important thing we'll need. This will be our detector. This is so that... it the uh, shoot, the game can tell how far an object is from your uh, turret. Okay. Once we have that done, uh, we probably want to see through it since you know. So we make the blend coefficient 100, and we can see right through it. Or you know, you could bring it to the back, whichever. But I like to be able to see through it. Okay, so we'll rename it Detector. Alright, once we have all that, I think we're ready to start. But first, target. Um, we get, I have to add a movement. 
we want to add path movement so that way we can actually control it and then we'll move it make it yeah okay so movement zero static movement one path now we edit the path movement kind of a zigzag kind of thing okay shoot I know it doesn't have to be perfect but okay Mm, let's not add that one and delete okay so now the speed let's make it 12 I had an 8 before but uh, that was a bit too slow but as you go through levels to like make it more difficult you can increase the speed that the spawner like uh, you know shoots these things out or you can uh, change the speed of uh, you know the path movement alright once we get that done we're ready to start some programming okay so now we're getting to programming we're gonna start with always and we're always gonna want the detector to uh, be positioned over the turret and um, all right, let's add new group of events. Uh, let's call this enemy AI. And now, um, always insert timer every two seconds. The spawner. Oh no, create object target relative to the spawner also one thing I did like kinda off screen I made the uh, spawner invisible at start as well as the detector I'll get to why I did that later okay so once we had that you know create at start We're gonna want to change the movement to the of the target because now it's in static movement we want it to be in path movement when it's created so if you did that right Let me hide the debugger here. Yeah, so you see. Okay, and now we're gonna add uh, turret a i, and now when the target collides with another object, the detector. every two seconds you can make the time whatever you want um, every two seconds it will look in the direction of the target and then launch an object bullet in direction to relative to the target make that and fire at 65 you can make it whatever you want but now the bullet collides with another object the target we want it to destroy the target you can have it also destroy the bullet unless you want the bullet to like go through the targets like I'll show you in the example like I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I mean but you know just showing see it took out two at once so if you don't want to do that you want to take out take it out one at a time then you do that and um, well that's basically the basics right there except one more cool thing I like to do let me add it down here instead is um to okay the mouse is over an object the turret then that'll make the detector reappear and let's move this down negate and because you know mouse pointer isn't over the uh, turret then it'll make it invisible once you get negate down like you know how to use it properly you can do a lot of cool things with it make the detector invisible at the start as well as the spawner and that's why I had it invisible before see like if you want to keep the uh, spawner off screen like that then you can do that 
just you know I wanted to show you how it worked and now you can see the distance like when the player is playing the game they can see the distance that um you know it can shoot and whatnot so as for like like if you want turret placement and stuff like that in your game I could probably go over that but I do it in another video just for now I hope you enjoy like you know what I've taught so far thank you so much for watching and um if you're a subscriber you know thank you for you know following us and uh you know taking a look at our work uh it means a lot to have 50 subscribers now I hope to grow that more by the end of the year just for now um you know just having so much good support from you guys is great um I will be leaving the MFA file to this like on my website and it will be updated via by my second tutorial so um I hope you enjoyed this